My name is Steve. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear okay, you. Okay, good. Um, first of all, I think I came up with four points that weren't addressed in the debate. First of all, being the deficit, as it continues to grow and grow and grow, uh, what are their plans to address, if any? Um, the homeless While you've been talking, it's gone up more <laughs> than all of us combined will make right. in our lifetimes just while you've been talking, but go right. ahead. Yeah, well, they talked about the uh, inflation rate, but yeah, that impacts the, the, the deficit as well. Homelessness, we really didn't hear much talk about that. And as we live in these large cities, we see the homeless population continue to go up, in my opinion, exponentially over the last couple of decades. Uh, any plans to remedy that situation? Uh, there are a couple others, but I forgot them, sorry. <laughs> well, you named some very good ones, some important ones that are very thoughtful. Let me ask you this, how many of you are bothered by the fact that Trump has been prosecuted as both a criminal and, and civilly? If that bothers you, raise your hand. If you say, no, that's just lawfare, they're just after him for their own reasons, raise your hand. Okay, so some of you it bothers, some of you it doesn't. Um, if you think it's politically motivated, raise your hand. Okay, so most of you think it's politically motivated. So why does it bother you if you think it's politically motivated? Yes, ma'am, in the back. Stand up, we'll bring you a microphone. Uh, you said that means it's not true? Okay, the comment up here was it doesn't mean it's not true, then it's politically motivated. Huh? Stand up, say your name. My name is Marilyn. I'm standing. Oh, okay. I'm short, sorry. <laughs> Dear. Um, it bothers me that it's politically motivated because our country was founded on equal justice under the law. And when, when Trump faced cases where the time limit had expired, cases that were changed from misdemeanors to felonies, that's not right. And then when Biden was actually proven guilty of having documents in his home that he wasn't legally allowed to have because he had been a senator and vice president and not a president, but they let him off. They said, well, he can't stand trial. That really bothers me because we need it to be equal. And there's people in this room that I know have not gotten a fair break on a court hearing. And it didn't have anything to do with them really doing anything wrong. People in this room? I bet. Oh, really? Who? I bet. Oh, <laughs> in my defense, these are chairs and those are stools. That's why it didn't look like you were standing up. Not that I needed a fence. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, let me ask you this. This debate, which was really hyped as being a big thing, did this underdeliver or did it deliver? Did this actually mean something to you? In the back, stand up. Hi, my name is Shelly. I'm also standing, so. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I really, I came into this with an open mind. I really, really wanted Vice President Harris to hit it out of the park. I don't think she did. I think she did better than some people expected her to. The cackle was not there. I kept waiting for it and it, it didn't come. But I still didn't get answers. I didn't get answers to fundamental questions that we need to know as voters. And we just keep getting circled around that. Like what? What did you not get an answer to? Her, her economic plans. What is an opportunity economy? What does that mean? Who's paying for the tax cuts that she's proposing? Because in my opinion, giving people down payment assistance on houses just drives inflation up higher. Who's paying for all of these uh, child tax credits? That's just the taxpayers coming out of pocket and hurting the middle class again. So I don't think that we got to the meat and potato, potatoes of the things that really matter. And we know from Donald Trump's presidency before, he can fix the economy. So I was really looking for her to make an impact on my thought process tonight, and she didn't deliver that. All right, how many of you agree that you heard kind of buzzwords, but not real substance tonight? Raise your hand. Okay, raise it real high because they're going to watch this. Really, they're gonna watch this. They're gonna say, Dr. Phil had a bunch of independents down there and asked some meaningful questions. They're gonna watch this. I wanna see that you all say, we heard buzzwords, we heard names of bills, but we didn't hear any substance. 
Let me ask you this. You said when they talk about we're going to get people down payments for homes, we're going to get child care. Does, when you hear things like student loan forgiveness, even if you're one with a student loan, I, I had one young man on, on the show that paid $945 a month for 10 years and owed more than he started with. Honest to God, I wanted to pay it off for him. I, I felt terrible. It was for cooking school. Hell, I can cook. Uh, but, but, but nonetheless, there is no loan forgiveness. What, what do you, God will forgive you, but you still got to pay the loan. Somebody's got to pay that, right? When you hear about that sort of thing, does it impact you that somebody's got to pay this? That even if it's, if it's a worthwhile thing, you, you may still say, I'm, I'm willing to do it. But you're where somebody's got to pay it, right? Yes, stand up. This will be our final comment here. Hi, my name is Deidre. Deidre. I've uh, been a social worker for over 25 years. i uh, funded bachelors uh, with the help of my parents, masters by student loans. I paid those student loans from 2000 to 2023, and my balance was greater than when I started. I applied, I worked for nonprofits, I had the opportunity to work with families, with children, with seniors, with adults who, are, uh, who have experienced significant issues in their life and needed support. And so it was a privilege of mine to serve those. The Biden administration put forth the, I believe, the manpower into the uh, public service loan forgiveness program to really look at who already qualified. Right. And in 2024, my balance was forgiven, which meant even though I had paid more than my borrowed amount plus interest, and I still had a greater balance, they said, "This is, we're done, you're done, go forward. And so now I'm able to consider the opportunities ahead of me without the weight of that balance that I've been paying off for 23 and a half years and that been, should have been paid for. Yeah, and you've been giving back along the way through the work you've been doing. It's been an absolute pleasure to do yeah. so. Well, thank you for your yes. comment. Thank you. All right, guys, we're out of time. This has really been informative to me, and I promise you these candidates are going to watch this. Thank you for coming tonight, and thank you at home for watching. Uh, if you didn't catch all of this, go to the Merit app, and you can watch it there. Special thanks to Greg Hartley and Scott Rouse. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Good night. <laughs>